Hello and welcome back to another Monster Monday, a series where I draw a creature from D&D and I talk about its lore and its history and what they like to fight. In this series I like to use your suggestions for monsters that you leave down in the comment section below in these videos and then my patrons over on Patreon have the opportunity to vote on which ones of those suggestions that they'd like to see. And this week my patrons have voted to see Draco Liches. and although many people have suggested this the first person goes by the name of Beauty Isn't Perfect over on YouTube. Something dragon related and definitely Draco Liches are among my most requested videos and I'll be honest I've been itching to draw something this grotesque and monstrous but I've been holding off on doing dragons because I think I might do a whole month dedicated to the different types of dragons in the future sometime but I think I can just about get away with Draco Liches outside of that criteria. But anyway, that's enough faff. Let's get started with today's video. So Draco Liches, as the name suggests, are a hideous fusion of D&D's arguably most awesome and terrifying monsters, dragons and liches. And I was quite surprised to find out that they have been a part of the game almost since day one. They made their debut appearance in Ed Greenwood's Cult of the Dragon article in Dragon Magazine issue 110 in 1986. That's when they were first referred to as Draco Liches. But the first mention of an undead dragon in D&D actually occurred a few years earlier in Lawrence Schick's White Plume Mountain Adventure module released in 1979, where one Dragotha, the former consort of the dragon goddess Tiamat, was given unnatural life by the demigod of undeath, Caius the Bone Master. Now I've already done a video on liches, I've done a Monster Monday on liches before, and it seems like quite a finickety, intricate process, something that a human or something humanoid might be able to manage quite easily, and although dragons can often shapeshift into something more manageable, something more dexterous, it tends to be their preference to stay in their enormous, powerful form. So I was curious as to how a Draco lich is actually created, and it's not super dissimilar from creating a humanoid lich, but rather than being an exercise that one magic user can perform on themselves, a dragon is literally a different kind of beast. More powerful, more ancient, more primordial than your average spellcaster. Now for those of you who didn't watch my uh, Lich Monster Monday, the TLDR of Lich creation, or the Lich creation process, is that a spellcaster wishing for eternal life in their flesh and bone form needs to pluck their immortal soul from their body, and fuse it with some sort of material object that is more durable than a body that might rot. Not too dissimilar from a horcrux in Harry Potter, the object could be something like a gem, or a necklace, or a tome, ideally something hardy and difficult to destroy, and this object is called a phylactery, and it becomes the immortality provider for the lich, let's say. But in the process of this creation, it also becomes an eternally unsatisfied and starving void of pure evil that a lich must continuously feed with new souls in order to maintain their long life. And I postulated in my lich video, although I couldn't find anything concretely confirming this, I'll just call it my own headcanon, that a lich's phylactery literally steals the years left that someone might have and feeds them back to the lich. So if a lich sacrificed a young adventurer, perhaps in their 20s or 30s, to their phylactery, they might end up with something like 50 or 60 years of extra life, and then they would probably need to do this process again, unless they wanted to continuously feed loads and loads of people to it, so they could hopefully lose track of how much time they're supposed to have left before they degrade. The major upside of a phylactery is that if a lich ever dies, the phylactery will form a new body for them, or breathe life back into their old corpse, if it's nearby, and not damaged beyond repair. However, this phylactery essentially becomes the new body, the new focus for a lich, so if it's ever destroyed or ceases to exist somehow, the lich is defeated and also crumbles to dust. They cease to exist, there's no afterlife for them, there's no nothing, they just, well, they, they just die. So they're extremely protective of their phylacteries and tend not to keep them on their person. And although their souls are immortal, their weak and fleshy bodies aren't. So liches, if not corrupted by this hideous and vampiric, parasitic kind of practice, when they first create a phylactery, are soon driven mad by having to continuously fuel this phylactery with new and fresh souls, or without a soul inside their body to kind of keep them alive and, well, a living thing. They are an undead creature, but still fully conscious, so they feel only cold as a sensation. They feel everything dulled. They'll be acutely aware of their 
fleshy, meaty husk of a body decomposing while they're still piloting it like a festering mascot outfit. Now the difference with Draco Liches is that the lichification process that dragons, well, dragons are pretty much forces of nature. They're not little weak mortal beings like us. Their souls, for good or evil, carry much more of the stuff of life than most mortal creatures do. So rather than something that they can perform themselves, this process requires a circle of mages or wizards, a cult basically, to perform a ritual where they will end up with a phylactery of some kind. And rather than a traditional phylactery being any object that the caster desires, the phylactery for a dracolich has to be taken in the form of a great and beautiful gemstone or a crystal. I presume because if a phylactery for something like a human just needs to be more sturdy than meat, then you can choose a stone or, you know, almost anything really. But a dragon, rather the dragon's worshippers in this case, need to find a substance that is tougher than the nearly impenetrable dragon scales the lich is already clad in, because why would you want to trap your soul in something that will decay faster than you, right? I suppose this also makes Dracoliches insanely hard to kill, because no boy wizard is going to plunge a basilisk tooth into a massive diamond the size of a treasure chest, and a huge amount of magical energy or force is going to be needed to crack this thing open. Now this gemstone phylactery for a Draco Lich also functions slightly differently to the average Liches. A dragon soul can't animate inside a human body once destroyed, and for whatever reason this gemstone phylactery can't produce a new vessel for a Draco Lich. Perhaps whatever rituals are required to bind a dragon soul into this gem are so complex that adding more nuances to it to create a whole other dragon out of nothing once this thing dies is just its too much for mortals to be able to master. Maybe the Dracolich doesn't want mortals being able to know how to produce dragons through magic. It would somehow maybe lessen the impact of its presence. Maybe its worshippers would no longer see it as something that needed to be worshipped if they could just produce ones of their own. But for whatever reason, instead of a Dracolich's phylactery producing a new dragon upon a Dracolich's death, when a Dracolich dies, its phylactery needs to be placed in proximity to another dragon's corpse. And then, the original dragon's soul will transfer into the new body. And I imagine this would be a really weird experience for the Dracolich. You might become a Dracolich as a blue dragon, let's say, with your connection to magic and lightning. And if you're slain, your cultists will be able to find some kind of dragon and maybe band together, some of them surviving an encounter with another type of dragon. The only one that they can find is a red dragon, let's say. You might wind up in a red dragon's body, spouting fire instead of lightning. The whole physiology changing. This has always made me wonder, what does a Dracolich feed its phylactery? Does it imprison human souls in there? Do the cult of mages and wizards do that for the creation? Do the mages that create the Dracolich get trapped inside this stone during this process? Is the purpose of their worship that they hope to be able to be trapped in this gem? Maybe they think they join the dragon for eternity, become part of a greater being, ascend and so on, being deceived by the dragon. Do all of their minds actually become this weird mishmash of things inside the dragon themselves? Maybe that's why a Dracolich is driven so mad. And if it's mortal souls, how many souls are required to feed a dragon? One? A whole village worth? Thousands? Or does a Dracolich require dragon souls to feed its phylactery, as a human would with human souls? We know that they're enemies of other evil dragons even. You could get a mission from perhaps your worst enemy, a terrifying dragon that you and your village has faced over and over again for generations, where they beg you to take on a Dracolich for fear of them getting trapped inside the soul of the Dracolich's phylactery. What do you do? Do you let this Dracolich kill this thing, or is it a greater evil? And why would a dragon want to become a Dracolich? I mean, we know that chromatic dragons, at least, are big-time evil. And if they're not incredibly self-serving, they will at least serve some monstrously horrible agenda, like the worship of the Dragon Queen Tiamat, for example. So they don't stand to change their personalities much by turning undead, although they do automatically sever all ties to their dragon gods in the process. They forsake them in exchange for their own eternal life, or some facsimile of it. But dragons already live for so long. Some ancient dragons are even thousands of years old, but presumably if adventurers don't catch up to them, I guess even they must die at some point. 
of old age and disease, they might begin searching for their immortality. But what on earth is a Draco Lich like to fight? other than every player's two worst fears combined into one hideous monstrosity. Well, they're essentially just a dragon, disappointingly, well, I say that if a dragon can be disappointing, you know what I mean. But yeah, they're essentially a dragon with extra bits tacked on. And like, I know I shouldn't be disappointed in that because dragons are amazing fun to use and they're also really fun to fight, but I just kind of assumed that there was something else in a Draco Lich. But yeah, anyway, anyway, I'm, I'm waffling. We have stats for an example of a Draco Lich on page 84 of the Monster Manual. We're told that you just take a dragon of any type and the following changes transform that into a Draco Lich. The type changes from a dragon to an undead, so it no longer requires food or drink or air or sleep. It gains resistance to necrotic damage. It becomes immune to poison damage because its skin is falling off and its organs are no longer do anything except fall out when poked by adventurers, so it doesn't really need any of its biological systems anymore. It becomes immune to being charmed and frightened and paralyzed or poisoned. And again, because organic body parts are just window dressing, really. Functions based on necr necromantic energy, but can't be exhausted either. In fact, a lot of the old drawings of Draco Liches see them as just a pile of bones in the shape of a dragon. So it really doesn't need any of the flesh that it has hanging off of those bones. Because it's just bones and magic and a smorgasbord of decaying meat. The Draco Lich is also resistant to magic, granting it advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects, which is pretty scary. And all of that is fine. It's terrifying, it's monstrous, but is it fun? I mean, it might be fun to fight. I tend to be more of a DM than a player, so I don't remember the last time I played, I fought against a, a Draco Lich. But as a DM, I would get a tiny bit, a little smidge bored of that. Like, don't get me wrong, Liches and Dragons are both fun, and this is a natural, harmonious fusion of the two creatures. But when I think of Draco Liches, I don't think of a fusion of the two enemies. I picture something that grows in power by an order of magnitude through this hideous process. The day I plant a Draco Lich on the table, I want all of my players wishing that they were wearing brown trousers. So if you'll allow me, I have the following sort of extra flavor to add to Draco Liches if you really want to have some fun as a DM and make your players wish that they were playing with someone else. Now, with this adaptation in mind, consider upgrading the challenge rating of a Dracolich to a 20 or a 22, but you can obviously use your own judgment as you're the person being a DM. So, a Dracolich is also, as the name suggests, a lich, and as such, has energy of a magical nature flowing through its body. Perhaps it even has a vast knowledge of arcane spells and of the magic holding it together. You never know, it might have absolutely tons of this knowledge because it's been around for quite a while. So I would like to make a Draco Lich a spellcaster in addition to everything else that's going on with it. Now perhaps the intricacies of magical lore aren't as simple for a massive dragon, but personally, I let it cast any of the spells that a Lich can on page 202 up to 7th level, perhaps swapping a few of these out like Plane Shift, which seems unnecessary for a dragon, and instead peppering a few extra spells in from more destructive schools of the nature of the kind of dragon. So for example, if it's a red Draco Lich, you add some more fire spells in there, for example. And if you're adding more spells into this list, it's a good idea to keep those spells at a lower level than the ones that you take out, because this is just a way to add some more variety and mechanics and fun and flavor for DMs, not a way to obliterate your party because dragons are already hard enough. So perhaps, perhaps the knowledge of magic that this thing has accrued, if it's a, originally a fire-breathing dragon, you could teach it burning hands, or lightning bolt if they're a blue dragon, so that it has more control over its innate abilities rather than having to rely on its breath attack to recharge. The idea being that it has time in its new eternal life to toy with magic, to experiment with the energies that make it up and its spellcasting has allowed it to draw on the energies that already make it up but form them into something more nuanced. Now within those kind of spells and its breath attack and things, I like the idea of a Draco Lich being so inherently corrupted to its core that its breath attack and all of its kind of spells are even tainted by this necromantic process. So as I include in the drawing later on here, with this kind of like sulfurous green flame pouring out of this creature's mouth, 
I'd personally make its breath attack deal necrotic damage rather than the traditional element, if that adds some interesting flavour and plays with your player's expectations of the resistances for like a fire dragon, let's say, and it'll give the paladin and the cleric something to work with. Again, throw your players off guard, make it more interesting for them. Personally, I'd also feel free to mix and match the legendary and lair actions from the Lich with those of your base dragon. Not like both, don't give your Draco Lich six legendary actions if you still want to have friends left at the table, but keep with the same three that it can use. Why not swap things out, keep it interesting? Maybe use the Lich's frightening gaze for two actions, making people run away so that you can get a reaction to slash them as they flee from combat and reposition them to be in proximity of a breath attack, something like that. I also love the idea of the Lich's lair action where it calls forth the spirits of dead allies, dead people from within the stone, who knows, to attack a creature within 60 feet of it. Maybe these are all the souls of the wizards and cultists that made the Dracolich's phylactery, or something like that, who knows. Either way, that's just my suggestion, that's how I would use a Dracolich. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I had absolutely tons of fun kind of theory crafting how I would use the Draco Lich and also drawing this creature here. If you'd like to support the channel, you like the kind of videos that I do, please make sure to leave a little like down below if you favorite this video and share it with your friends. If you wanna see more videos like this, I release videos every Monday. So make sure to subscribe and hit the little bell icon to get notified whenever I make videos. If you have a monster that you'd like to see me draw, I'm always taking suggestions. So please make sure to leave your monster suggestions down in the comment section below. And if you want to support the channel in a more personal way, get rewards like copies of all of the monsters that I draw each month as prints and have a chance to vote on which monsters that I draw next time, please check out my Patreon page any kind of support that you give, whether it's a thumbs up down below or financially, the equivalent of a cup of coffee really helps this channel to grow and helps me to make more videos like this every week. So thank you so much for your very, very kind support. If you're not interested in any of that, but you do really like the drawing and you want to get merchandise like mugs and bags and t-shirts and prints of various drawings that I'll be producing, you should be able to see down below that there is now a little uh, bar because I've set up a little shop with all sorts of products but I will also be adding prints of the monsters that I draw on Monster Mondays so you can get a hold of those if you would like one for yourself and additionally I'll be making other products as time goes on that should hopefully enhance your tabletop nights but thank you so much for joining me if a dragon insists that you join its cult don't listen to it because it's only using you for your soul and happy monster hunting mm -hmm.